So we're talking about why there has not been a Biggest Loser reunion show. Did you ever wonder about that? So we've all watched it. It was a great show. Love the trainers on there, super full of energy. And we loved watching the people get on the scale and lose 10, sometimes 20 pounds in a week. And we cheered them on and we saw their bodies transform and we saw them go through ups and downs and crying and tough workouts. But do you even know what goes on behind the scenes? So this ties into everything that we always talk about regarding calories in, calories out. So many of you are on that hamster wheel, you're brainwashed, you're still in the 1980s, 1990s, with that way of thinking of counting calories. Maybe you were brainwashed through Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers, where it was all about tracking, tracking your macros and tracking your calories. And now you're so consumed with calories in, calories out that you believe that that is the way to go. So this is gonna be a game changer for you and you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the Fixer line is Metabolism Fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism. And it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight. Add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2 which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, oh yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form. So you can drink it through your day. It's going to flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. So let me tell you a little bit about the Biggest Loser TV show, the unknown behind the scenes. These people basically, I mean, they quit their job. They left their families and they go to the Biggest Loser house where they are working out upwards of some of them six to eight hours per day. All of their meals were accounted for and their calories were incredibly low. Big results mean big views. Big views means big money. So we had to get these people, we, I was not a part of it. They had to get those people losing weight at a rapid pace and be dramatic about it. They couldn't step on the scale every week at 400 pounds and lose three pounds. That doesn't make a TV show. They needed to get them to lose, lose, lose weight at a rapid, rapid pace. I would never advocate the diet that they were on. I would never, ever tell people to work out that many hours per day. Here's what happens. So you kill yourself at the gym. You go, even you normal people, maybe you go two, three hours a day. Maybe you're doing the split days, like two a days, a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. 
and you're not in a competition lose fat mode, well, what that's going to do is increase your cortisol levels and it will actually downregulate your T3 levels. So that free T3, that beautiful hormone that gets into your cells and gives you metabolism and grows your hair and strengthens your nails, that's going to drop. So with that will come your metabolism. Another possibility, probability, is that your reverse T3 will increase. Now, reverse T3 increases when you are either taking T4 medication and you're not converting properly, or when you are hypothyroid, not on medication, but that T4 that your thyroid is making cannot convert over into the active form of T3 that we just talked about. Reverse T3 also elevates in times of stress. It's a survival mechanism of the body. So we always talk about your body being smart, having a lot of innate intelligence. Think about when you're sick, you have an injury, a trauma, you're in the ICU, you're in the ER. That reverse T3 will go up because it's basically telling the body, right now you need to survive. Right now you need to heal whatever trauma or injury has occurred. And in order to do so, you really need to downregulate the metabolism. You don't need to be burning fat right now. You don't need to be growing hair right now. You don't need to be improving skin tone right now. What you need to do is survive. So shut down the metabolism, stop burning fat, and protect this body for survival. So reverse T3 will go up when the body senses that it's basically in a starvation mode. When calories are low and a person is killing themselves through exercise, that reverse T3 will go up. The other thing that occurs with high cortisol levels, not only will high cortisol impair that T4 to T3 conversion, but it will actually set you up for a greater chance of insulin resistance. Now, we talk about this a lot. We talk about insulin resistance where insulin cannot get into the cell and that increased insulin in the body creates an inflammatory response. It sends your blood glucose on a roller coaster of highs and lows, and you are always in a fat storage mode because of that high insulin. Fastest way to age, keep your insulin levels up. So if you want wrinkles and some cancer and dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurological diseases, definitely keep your insulin levels high throughout the day. So keep killing yourself at the gym. Definitely keep eating six times a day. Keep your calories under 1,000 and your insulin will go up for sure. And you'll age quicker, much quicker. So what happens with the biggest loser contestants is, of course, their body is going to respond at first. Their bodies are carrying around a large amount of extra fat. So any kind of dietary change, any kind of increase in physical activity, any kind of stringent focus, diet and exercise program at that point of time is going to create a shift in their body. Yes, the body's going to release fat. It's going to burn fat. But as they get smaller and smaller, as they lose more and more weight, their metabolism is gradually decreasing. Now, I do not know the total calories that they were given on the show. I cannot make a statement on that. I do not have any factual evidence in front of me to say, yes, they were given under 1,000 calories a day. But through the rumor mills and whatever you hear, and some of them that have spoken out after the fact, they said they were on a very, very calorically restricted diet. And after the show, when they go back to eating normally, and I don't mean they went back to eating the way they were before, donuts and pizza and fast food, when they go back to a normal way of eating and their calories increase, let's say they increase by 500 a day because that's normal over here, and they were kind of abnormally low over there, the body starts to shift. It doesn't have that metabolic effect to keep them at that weight. It naturally shifts because the metabolism is low, free T3 is low, insulin is high, cortisol is high because that's a stress on the body when you're reducing your calories and killing yourself at the gym. And their body starts to lay down fat. And it's just this rapid snowball effect that occurs that they can't stop. So let me back up. I know because I've been there. I used to compete. Many of you know I used to compete in fitness and figure competitions and the diet was very strict. So that's how I found out I have hypothyroidism because I was gaining weight during one of those crazy dieting exercise phases instead of losing. Technically, the body should lose at first. So that's how I was initially diagnosed and found out that I had a problem. But let's back up to all the times that it was working. 
all those times I stepped on stage. And then after that day, I stepped off stage. And like many bodybuilders and figure competitors, we have a treat. You know, we have a cheat meal or two or four. And then, you know, you start to feel a little bit sluggish and you get back into eating clean, maybe not as, definitely not as strict as it was pre-competition or when you're in competition mode. And you start going to the gym once a day instead of twice a day. The fat starts coming on. Five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds in a very short amount of time because your body is rebelling. It's basically saying, screw you. You've done this to us for way too long. Now we're getting you back. Now you're going to pay for all those workouts in the gym where you were not equipped to be there for six hours a day. Now you're going to pay for that 1,100, 1,200 calorie a day diet, way too low for you. So now you have no metabolism. You might have a thyroid problem now. You might have low T3. You might already have known you had a thyroid problem and you still have low T3 because you're not optimized and you just plummeted your own free T3. Now you have high insulin. Now you have cortisol. Now it's a long, long journey back. And that is exactly what happens to the Biggest Loser contestants because we see them six months, a year, two years later, and they are almost at the same weight as when they stepped into that Biggest Loser house for the first time. Some of them gaining two and 300 pounds back, maybe not 300, but 200 back, putting it back on. And that's all a biological metabolic shift. I guarantee you the producers didn't really care about because they wanted the show. They didn't care about the after effects, although they should have thought about the after effects because those people eventually are seen by the public. They eventually come out and speak and say what kind of hell they were put through. And I think maybe even some of the trainers came out. Did Jillian Michaels ever come out and say like, yeah, I wasn't really so cool with what was going on on the show. I think one of them did, maybe Bob Green. Anyways, that is why you should not be doing calories in, calories out. Do not focus on your calories except for the fact that you need to keep them at a healthy point. If you are tracking calories at all, which I don't recommend, but if you're one of those obsessed people that have been brainwashed through Weight Watchers and you have to track, you got to write it down, then when you look at your total caloric intake, you better make sure that it's high enough for your age, for your weight, for your metabolism. And you better make sure that that consists of really good food, healthy fats, moderate protein, good carbohydrates. Maybe you need to go on the lower side. Maybe you're just adding in some sweet potatoes, jasmine rice, no grains, Maybe you're doing that, but you better make sure that those calories aren't too low. Do not try to kill yourself. Do not try to be a Biggest Loser contestant because that's what happens to them afterwards. So calories in, calories out, no more. No more. Throw it out the window. I know it's hard. I know it's so hard to get out of that mindset. I know, but you can do it. You can get out of the mindset, throw away the calorie counting and the macro counting and all your little counters and all your little apps that count and throw away your Weight Watchers book, and throw away your Jenny Craig. You're going to do what we have mapped out for you to do, and you're not going to be a Biggest Loser contestant. If you lose two pounds in a month, that's a show for me right there. I could have a thyroid show, or an insulin resistance show, or people who can't lose weight no matter what they do show, And we'd be celebrating that two pound weight loss in a month because you had no metabolism to start. And what were you doing last month? Gaining. What were you doing the month before that? Gaining. Celebrate the small victories. Celebrate the two pound weight loss because that's a win. And that right there is a show. Thank you so much for listening to the Thyroid Fix podcast. As always, please share this with anyone that you know that needs this information. And I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there and in your life who do. If you would please take a moment to write a review on Apple Podcasts, that would be much appreciated. I read all of them. Also, please remember that anything that you hear on this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat. So you always want to check with your doctor about any advice given that you hear on this podcast. And if you would like to book a discovery call, a free discovery call to go over everything that's going on with you and to go over how I can help you, please go to my website at amyhorneman.com. 
The link is always in the show notes. And click on book a call. Choose a time and a day that's right for you. And we will see how we can help you. Thanks for listening.